back out, and we hope to see you as a speedy recovery, but we miss you. Yes. So we're opening up the uh, source board meeting. Feel better, Dan. Yeah. Uh, pledge. 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 February. February 22nd. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. St. John, he watches all the time. Hi, Freddie. <laughs> uh, we need a motion to sign the warrants. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? This is for Melody. See me grab for that. Everybody better run. <laughs> so now we need a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of February 8th as written. So moved. All yes. discussion, all in favor? <coughs> okay, old business. Um, Renee did some research for us on municipal moratoriums for the marijuana issue, and MMA sent us a generic legal document that we could use and, and just to explain to the public that a moratorium is only a time when you can try to figure out what you do and don't want. It's not uh, to put anybody out of business or it's to just see what would be best for the community. Is there a particular place that it would be better to be sold in than other places like a certain length of uh, mm -hmm. feet from churches or playgrounds or schools? So. Um, we're just going to fall in with the other municipalities and try to put our thinking caps on. And Joanne and Rachel will be attending a seminar about the subject March uh, 24th in Bangor. Yeah. Yes. So that will be helpful. And in the meantime, it'll just be for 90 days if we do pass a moratorium so that we have time to think about what kind of restrictions we would want to put on the mm -hmm. sale of recreational marijuana. Okay. So um, that's for that. And the other business, we have a storm update from Renee. She's been working very, very hard on with Mike Heineman about bringing the 48 hours of the blizzard together with bills. Right. Mike Heineman emailed us to let us know that we can submit a collection of our expenses for 48 hours worth of the storm. And we chose, I chose February 13th and 14th as our most expensive days. And I've got everything together and, and email that to him today. And the county needs to come up with $119,000 worth of expenses. The problem with it is a lot of communities contract their roads out mm -hmm. and they don't have their own public work and therefore they're not eligible. So that's why Washington County is harder to get this kind of funding because we only have Eastport and Lubeck and Machias and Talent and people that just have the communities that have a public work mm -hmm. department. So we did our best. We came up with um, just under fifteen thousand dollars worth of expenses and submitted them. And hopefully it's enough to put us over mm -hmm. the top. But if not, we did everything we could. 
Good. 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 Thank you for that. that worked. I know I've done that before, and it's a lot of a lot of figures to pull together. But we knew it was 48 hours this time, so. Mm. Well, the last time, we had that horrible winter. Well, we, we had, had some very, two storms really back to back. Affluent and we town were down south that got all the money. Yes, which you're seemed absolutely right. But Mike Heineman said that yeah. this storm, those storms weren't quote unquote historic. And this one has been deemed a historic storm. So we do stand a fairly good chance. Yeah. So it's just a matter of everybody getting the numbers in. John had a question. What was that number again? 119,000. That's the amount of things submitted? That's, 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 that's just for Washington County. All oh, of Washington yeah. County together okay. collectively and, and has. 16,000 was for the town? That's what we put in. We put in 14,800 and some change. Mm -hmm. 119 was for the all of Washington. Right. And if they don't reach that, I understand, then we can't get it. Nobody gets it back. So <coughs> the county has to, like all the public works Community. communities, so have to add. It's not a good thing they're getting. No, no. See, we didn't get it last time because we didn't have enough. So. Mm. This is the first step in trying. Okay. Well, let's hope. Okay, so where are we? We are on Constitution. Constitution. No, new business. Snow discharge permit. Oh. Yet again. What's that? Snow discharge oh, permit. Oh, yes. So the morning of the second big storm, which was Thursday morning, I got a phone call from Ricky Bradley to come in and try to field phone calls. Things were happening. Uh, the guys did a great job with what they had to work with. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of snow to deal with all at once. And um, we came in, and he's like, i got to get the permit to dump the snow. There is a legal process and it goes through the, the Department of Environmental Protection. And I called the lady, she was there at 7.30 in the morning, I couldn't believe it, in the blizzard. <laughs> but she answered the phone and she helped me through the process. And again, it's another red tape type of thing. Sure. But um, we, I spent the next day and a half, maybe two, getting it done. And she, another lady called me to update me. She said, Lubeck and Eastport are actually two very communities that are different from every other community in the state of Maine. Mm -hmm. And two years ago, three years ago, they gave us an emergency act of God type mm -hmm. of granting that they yeah. just allowed us. And she yeah. wanted to know if we wanted to go fully ahead with the permit or just how many times can we get that kind of, so. Yeah. It's $150 for the permit, and, and, right. and Renee's already put the ad we in the paper. We had to put an ad in yeah. the paper, which was... And she's filled out. And she's, have you sent the letters all out to the abutters? So it was, I think probably she's looking for permission from the select board to yeah. go ahead with the official permit. I don't see why we wouldn't do that, because no. it's good for five years. Oh, I think we should. Yeah, yeah, we should. Pay yeah, $150 a year. Yeah. Yeah. Have it. You yeah. don't have to scramble yeah. when you're we in We don't have to do it. <coughs> it's clear that Eastport and Lebec were hit more than anyone yeah. else. And our it downtown is nowhere to yeah. put the snow. There's yeah. just nowhere and to put it. And it's not a green light to just go dump snow. Mm -hmm. You have to have exhausted all your other, yes. even with the permit, yes. you have to try your other options. And you, you have, have parking yes. lots to dump it in. So it's a last ditch effort, even with the permit. So. Yeah, so I, do it. Yeah. I, would, I guess we need a motion to let Renee go ahead with getting a formal permit. I, I would move that we let Renee go ahead and get a formal permit. Good. Second. Okay, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Discussion? All in favor? Thank you. All your hard work not in hand. Yeah, okay. this weekend I was in Belfast. It was clear all the way down there. You know, there's no snow close to what we have. Yeah. It was like, it was really? Amazing. Yeah. You were surprised. I was. We're just, uh, this is just a contract that needs to be signed for uh, renewal, and you'll see on the sticky note there that I copied it. It's going from 138. Is that a month? That's yearly. Annually. Is that the airport? <coughs> no, no, no. This is the posted to me. Oh, oh, oh. Is that annually? Not monthly? This is quarterly. Mm -hmm. Build quarterly. Mm -hmm. Oh, quarterly. Okay, so it's gone from 138 to one, one, 138 to 153. It's really not much we can do about it since that gave this to me. It ha it is a contract that has to be signed, and I just yeah. encourage Renee to let get a motion. So, get so a motion. yes, so, yes. <laughs> so, do I have a motion that we can go ahead with so the postage moved. meter? So moved. Second, Second. Tony. All in favor? Permanent municipal. Oh, this is a wonderful letter that Renee got. Um, you can explain that if you want. 
as permanent permanent municipal agent for the BMV. Okay. Um, anytime there's a t an agent representative, see for the t for the Bureau of Motor Vehicles, we're an agent. We work for them. We're an extension of them. And during our town clerk transitions and um, the the agent is under the microscope, you know, and it they let us know it's going to be six months of any all the reports we send in weekly. Um, they, they really scrutiny. scrutinize yeah. every dot. So those questions we ask you at your registration, we we try to be thorough at that moment so that I can't, don't catch things at the weekly report stage. And the girls are doing a fantastic job. They really up their game. And we got an early letter saying that we've already been cut loose. Um, so, so we are no longer under a serious under, yeah. microscope. <laughs> oh, so, which I thought that was a fantastic letter that, that she got. Good job. Her yes. first yes. week of work. Uh, very good, Renee. Yes. Very good. So Amira, Amira sent, uh, it was actually sent to John, but I got it and it was, I was reading it. During the snow, a normal course of business for Amira Maine, it has been necessary to travel over roads that mm -hmm. are posted with our line, line trust in order to perform restoration activities in the event services interrupted. The mayor would like your approval to expand our access to posted roads to include the provision of service to new customers as well as some isolated reliability recovery projects that are currently part of our capital plan. Uh, these projects consist of corrective work on a number of circuits in order to bring Amira's Maine's reliability to an acceptable level. We instituted this program several years ago and having the ability to continue to work on these year-round will enhance our ability to successfully improve <coughs> reliability across our service territory. Additionally, the nature of our 24-hour business necessitates the line workers rotate call duty and take bucket trucks home each night. We would appreciate the flexibility to be able to have that ability with the same waiver. In order for us to accomplish the above, we will require your favorable reply by simply signing this letter and returning it in the address below. So I really wanted your feedback on this. It seemed like a lot of gobbledygook to me, and I repeated about the same word about ten mm -hmm. times. So I, I don't know. Does this mean they want to go on roads that not, they normally can have trucks on? I really wasn't quite sure what they were asking for here. We don't have any posted roads that I know mm -hmm. of. So. Is, is that weight, like you know, bridges that have a weight limit? Is that the kind well, of thing? I don't know. Do you know? I think it's I just a, a, a thing they do every year. And formality. Formality. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. They, so they, you're, you're aware of this? Yeah. yeah. If they did it before. I right. seem to remember Next John year. doing something about yeah. do you? Yeah. 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 They have okay. to get permission to go and post So can we yes. have a motion to let Renee sign this letter and send it back? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. There you go. Got a little pen ready? Or you got your little original stamp. <laughs> Renee ordered a little stamp. I said, you get a little red stamp and says the yeah. original on it so we know which one is the original. Yeah. And we can save it. There we know. Oh, thank you, letter. To the Lubeck Board of Selectmen, I am writing to thank you for allowing us to hang lights on town trees for the holidays. I, I think citizens and children will enjoy them. It will also give the children a project to decorate and to engage them in their town. The Christmas lighting has been very popular. We will use something stronger to attach the objects so that they will not blow up the hill no, no, across to Rachel's yard. Yes, exactly. I, I appreciate that our board is so willing to help in any project that makes our town sparkle. I will leave it to you for time frame on the use of electricity. I am picking two weeks for holiday. We will be looking for LED lights as they are more efficient, thank you. So I thought, and I thank you. So they did the Valentine's Day. That yes, and through the breath. blizzard too. No was, kidding. Was so are they going to do St. Patty's Day? I think they are. Oh, yes, oh nice. That's what they said. But we already did the first workshop today. Mm -hmm. Drone legality workshop. Huh? Mm -hmm. Invited to a drone legality workshop. I don't know if anybody would be interested in that, but. Hmm. Maybe Jimmy Doherty or, or Craig McCaslin, they both do drones. Okay, and so John, 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 is John drone. Smith, drone. Yeah. it's a workshop that's been held on um, Maine Municipal Association March 21st, Tuesday, in Augusta, aerial drones and legal, the current legal landscape. Hmm. Snowmobile. So if any of you guys are interested, 21st, March, March 21st. Okay. Okay.
Um, that letter that you see that was in order for Blizzard Update, that was the actual original letter from Mike Heineman that he sent to all the municipalities mm -hmm. asking for the expenses. And when they told me, I couldn't believe that when I walked in today, she said, it has to be in by three. And I'm like, oh. so she'd been, she'd been working on it. Um, snowmobile refund. We got a letter from the Denny'sville Snowmobile Club requesting that any funds returned to the town from the state of Maine for snowmobile registration be forwarded to our club for area trail maintenance and developing. So we did receive, according to Suzette, a $225 check called snowmobile refund. Mm -hmm. And I think the state, I understand, contributes to each municipality to help groom and put, take care of the trails. We do not, at this time, have an organized snow plan trail. for snowmobile trails, something to think about. Do we want to give this money to the Denny'sville Snowmobile Club Ooh. to help them? We would need you, yeah. your permission. Ooh. Sure. Why did they send us a, a Everybody, I think, gets Every municipality. Every, uh, but, you know, I don't we, we apparently have got them in the past. There was an account to put them in. And I'm not in the snowmobile world, but I take it this is probably one of the closest ones to Lubeck, and mm -hmm. Lubeck is probably do take advantage of this, maybe to a Oh, so they get their license to, here? I think, yep. Yeah. Rhonda's uh, I, I use the trail today out of a little bit for the thing with my sled dog. And okay, so I you the, yeah. you get your license I, I here. I belong to the club. Uh, that is real club? Yeah. Is that the closest one yeah. probably to go back? Yeah. So, so that's okay. why they requested yeah, it. So about. we're thinking okay. if we're not grooming mm -hmm. our own trails, well, why not let them have the money to help? It'll help them. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. so my question is, do we have any trails here for, for snow um, trails? Not formal. Not uh, formal trails. No, 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 yeah. Yeah. If you see one going by your backyard, that would be yeah. a t yeah. Oh, <coughs> I would hope that I don't, mm. quite frankly. I'll be down later. <laughs> <laughs> I'll follow you so, with the donkey. <laughs> so who wanted to, Tony, you made the motion? Yes, I did. Second. We... Second, anybody? Second. Mm. All in favor? Sorry. Or can you tell your friends? $225. That's you want nice. those trails clean now. No, oh, they're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> the only formal trail we have is Maple Tree Road, so we don't have that much snow. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, we just got an email from Fairpoint to yesterday saying that announces the completion of their broadband expansion project in six main communities. And in Lubeck, they took broadband to Blue Cove Road, Dixie Road, Gray Feathers Drive, Island Drive, Jim Said Road, Julia Cove Lane, and Weir Lane. So that's what they've been doing. And in Trescott, Dixie Road, Havenhurst Road, Haycock Harbor Road, Jones Road, Seal Point Road, and Smokehouse Road. So our Trescott that's friends. All off Blue Cove Road. Yeah, you know, all those little places. Yeah. They cannot well, get high speed if they could. Well, Dixie Road is 191. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, committee updates. Tony, Harbor Board's tomorrow. Tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. Joanne? Monday at 4 30. What's that? Down East DMS. Rachel? What we, was the you know, economic development? Been, well, economic development is, uh, when is it, March? March 8th at 4th at 3. At 3. Yes. So the next budget meeting is going to be at Seven. March 7th at 4 15. Okay. And the next shellfish meeting is going to be March 13th at 6 o'clock. Do you have any meetings, Renee? We have a recycle. We have not oh, scheduled recycling. a new recycle meeting because we canceled the last one. We seem to be um, under the the weather god's anger. Maybe we should talk about quality TV transition a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, you, you, that's you know, the yeah. committee you just said. And, and I think we'd be going forward when we get over the snow and all of the other things going on budget. So we, we could have maybe the representative from the select board give a little update on their, their committee mm -hmm. of what was going on. I know mm -hmm. you didn't have a meeting yet. Um, Shellfish is, was really, uh, yesterday, last night, was filled with people concerned for the state trying to uh, abolish municipal, shellfish municipal ordinances, allowing the entire state to come in and dig the clam flats. And so 
the first um, LB202 was, was um, taken off the table because of some activists who were working very hard to get it off the table. <laughs> and now I believe the uh, rumor has it that CMR is going to try to come up with some kind of alternative, and but they have no comment right now. And I'm, it's, it's going to be, uh, we have some people going to the Fisherman's Forum next week, and hopefully we'll find out some more then. But we certainly, as a town, with our 92 miles of shoreline, want to preserve our clam flats, mm -hmm. and particularly mm -hmm. for the residents who make it their livelihood, mm -hmm. yeah. of which is yeah. sometimes as much as 10% of sure. our population sure. live off the clam flats. Yeah. So, Quaddy TV? We had our first Quaddy TV committee meeting tonight at 4, and um, we decided the transition from Funky and Paula to the town will be March 1st. Mm -hmm. They're still going to work with us. Bunky and Paula are great. Um, this channel has been a treasure to the back and Washington County, really. There's so many communities this channel broadcasts in. And mm -hmm. so I encourage anybody that wants to advertise, um, beginning March 1st, you can call the town office. Um, you'll be able to pay for your ads here and communicate with us directly and uh, keep this channel going. And for the first time in a long time, we're broadcasting live on our Ustream, which I put a link on the Lubeck Community Bulletin Board at around 5 o'clock tonight. Nice. So uh, if we can get more people involved, um, even though they can't, if they're not here in, in uh, person, then they can at least know what's going on. In the mm -hmm. community. And being informed is really important in, in the small community. So it's necessary that people have cable TV to see this. No, internet. That was oh, okay. internet. And I'm okay. broadcasting two ways. Oh, going okay. Over the Fred was cable I, mean, that, I missed that part. And I should remind people, Time Warner changes our channel all the time. And yes. now the most recent one is 99.7. That is the digital channel for Quaddy TV. And um, otherwise, you can go on our website and, and find the link to the Ustream. So when we're broadcasting. And you can get email updates for when that... When that feed is broadcasting, you'll get a little chime or an email, hey, they're broadcasting now. So it's kind of cool what technology mm -hmm. lets us That's do. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thank you to Paula and Bunky for, they, they've they um, been doing Hawaii TV for almost a 30 long time. years. Mm -hmm. And that's yes. a long commitment, Yes, getting those ads yes. in. Long and to time. David Aldridge, who's, who's stepping up and mm -hmm. is our cameraman lately. So and we thanks just Bobby thank Hunter's everybody, wonderful. Bobby Conley, the whole Mm -hmm. Warren Foley. I mean, yeah, there was a board that ran that channel for yeah. many years, yeah. and we just want to keep it going. Good. That's really exciting. Mm -hmm. Thanks to all of <coughs> you. Public comment? Oh. I just have for clarification, I'm not sure I quite understood what Renee just said mm -hmm. about Quiet TV. So if I, were, I don't have time warning, I know Mike Stravani brought it up the last time about he didn't want to use public funds for something he doesn't get. So you've resolved that by putting it on the community bulletin board, and we can hit something when we go on there. I put a that link will launch on us, there. Yeah, yeah. that'll launch us into that. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I'll try to do it every time. Uh, when you say every how time, busy, meaning I mean, what if before what do you the do? meeting, like in the moment, um, it might be a link that you might want to save in a favorite. Somewhere so right. that you know where to find it, or but does that link give you what is on Party TV? No, it's just this. It's just this meeting. This it's meeting. Connected to the okay, meeting. so then, Quaddy TV, the ads. We still have no way of letting everybody. Yes, see them. there is there is software, and and Jonathan Stentz is on our committee now, and he is very fluent in all that, and he knows the softwares, and eventually. The revenue from the ads will go, and I believe I'm right, I hope when I say this, that the revenue from the ads are going back into the channel, mm -hmm. and so that it helps well, it, it, it to maintain be, the equipment. We might want to, yeah. uh, I think we might have to do that at town, at town meeting, but um, mm -hmm. we can certainly preliminarily put it in a separate We can set account. up a line item in the new budget. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. what we'll do mm -hmm. is we'll set up a line item. To help item. sustain itself so yeah. that we'll be able to purchase sure. equipment and, and, and software that will enable us. To, we don't want to phase out the cable channel, but we do want to... Now we, we no, but I think Mike's, Mike's issue was not everybody has Time Warner. Right. And the ones that do, but a lot of them still have Time Warner to be able to get the channel. Yeah, oh, it the, goes both ways. The people in town meeting voted for the thousand dollars to take over Quaddy TV. Oh no, no, no! I have no so, objection with that. So is the 
the majority at the town meeting vote for that. And we only paid 500, right? So we have 500 open. Do we want to make a motion to temporarily isolate those funds so that we can make a general oh, absolutely. Uh, voting for yes. it in August? I mean, yes. we, we can certainly, as a select board, put it in a line item now. The revenue account. Revenue mm -hmm. account. Mm -hmm. And then find, and then yeah. ask the town people yes. mm -hmm. if we can, in fact, keep that in funds separated to go back into Quaddy TV, mm -hmm. which wasn't done yeah. last August. August. We didn't do it in August. We just voted to buy the TV station. We didn't discuss the funds or where it was going. I don't think. And it's not a money maker. Don't get me wrong. No, I don't think it's going to be. It's going to be. We what? have to keep it low key, or otherwise our lease agreement would yeah. go up with prices for the ads. You're going to. Did you just? Did you they're. Come up with that they're. Yet? If we're going to keep them the same as what they've always been, three dollars a week or mm -hmm. ten dollars a month. Do you, do you have any expenses in terms of like licensing or that kind of thing? We went through the licensing last time. We, and it's no, a one shot. There's no, no fee, right? There's no fee. No fee, but we can pass on a fee to the subscribers of Time Time Warner. We we've left that in the addendum, up to five percent, and then the money comes back. Part of the money comes back to the town. Depends mm -hmm. on how much it's going to cost to run it, yeah. and how much time it's taken away from the from the the town staff. That's why Renee has gathered many volunteers yes, in the committee it's a nice because committee. but ultimately they're gonna people are gonna walk in with ads during uh -huh. town time. Yep. So that's why I think Paula had a certain day well when until Renee helped out with it. I think Paula did it on Mondays, didn't she? So you want to do something like that where they yeah. do you add once well, a week? I, well, I guess what they could do is just, there was a box, remember? The box was at yeah, Mercy's. Yeah. We should go yeah. and put a little ads in the, in the box. Mercy's, yeah. And, and then, then she right. would pick them up once a week. So maybe what you want to do is, is have a box for ads and then one person can, a volunteer from the committee can come and actually work on the ads once We've a week. We've got some great, like I said, great committee members. Mm -hmm. We've got Mary Green and Becca Green. And it's great for any young people that want to go into yeah. the advertising business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I encourage anybody that it's wants to. It's a good to, internship yeah, for the kids, yes. It's come up and play around with computers. Experience. Mm -hmm. But Mary Green, she's right down the hill. And, you know, we work closely together mm -hmm. and uh, constant communication. And if I see an ad comes in, I'll say, hey, Mary, come, can you come up and put on some ads? You know, we'll work mm -hmm. all, that out within. Yeah. But, Barbara? Oh, Paula and Bunky also allow us nonprofits to advertise. She something for uh, mentioned that tonight at the meeting. She's going to provide me a list of people that they don't. It know, was usually those that were here yeah. in the town. If something was coming up, a dinner or yeah. the fire association. Mm -hmm. Public announcement. The American Legion yeah. was running a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. right. They put it on and they didn't charge them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That was my question. Yeah. Any, we're gonna continue. any of the churches or right. anything mm -hmm. like that? Yeah. We'll, we'll continue mm -hmm. the legacy that Paula and Bunky have established. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, second. I have something that maybe uh, you aren't quite aware of that needs to be called to attention. That would be the, um, the minimum wage law that went into effect in Maine and federally. And um, you might not be aware of it, but Maine's current salary, not the hourly rate, salary rate is 519.24 as of January 7th, which means the minimum wage that you can pay any salaried person mm -hmm. is 27,048 cents. So um, we are currently in violation of that, and something needs to be looked so into. What are you talking about? There's only one salaried person. You, you said there's two one. salaries: a $25,000 salary for clerk and a $30,000. That's how our um, accounting line item wise, mm -hmm. but she's being paid with one check. Well, you said it was two separate jobs. <coughs> so I, I mean, wanted to make sure we weren't in violation of that $25,000 um, salary. Well, we'll probably have to change it then to twenty seven five and twenty seven five. We'd be able to do it that way if, that, if that's what needs to be done. Thank and, you for telling us. Um, also, I don't know if you're aware, but the federal minimum wage salary as of December 1st, went up to $47,476,000 a year per salary. Doesn't matter if it's part-time or full-time, the salary position has to be paid. So if it's two salary positions, the total amount that Renee has to be paid by law is $94,952, unless you combine those positions. Well, I guess we'll have to do that then. 
here, something needs to be done. Right now, there's a stay in federal court until March 3rd um, for that to go into effect, but it will be retroactive. And that was a federal mandate that was put out last year. It's something that needs to be checked into to make sure that we're in compliance with that. Well, she's not getting paid two checks. So she's getting paid one check, one mm -hmm. salary for two jobs. So it's mm -hmm. a little... I don't. I understand where you're where you're coming from, and I appreciate you pointing that out. But I think we'll be just fine. But we will look into it. Okay, because you said it's too. She's being paid for well, two different positions, and yeah. unless you formally put those positions together, you have to pay them separately. So something needs to be done, whether you either formally put those together by a motion that it's just one job, or that um, right now until the federal wage. Uh, law goes into effect. Um, right now, it's being underpaid uh, by the $2,000 a year. But that's just something to be looking into. Yeah, I mean, you can we can formally put the job together, but okay. we're still going to, we can still make it line items, Barbara. I guess I don't understand, and I'm not questioning your figures, mm -hmm. but I don't understand how the federal government can tell every business in the state of Maine what you have to pay somebody. I mean, that would mean every bank, every the hospital, regional medical center, everybody mm -hmm. would have to start paying these fees. We got problems keeping people in Maine now. Mm -hmm. They'd be not walking out of town, they'd be running. They can't afford those. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how you can mandate something like that. I can understand well, the hourly wage huh? that they served mm -hmm. about, but that mm -hmm. I don't get. No, it was it was a law that was put into effect last year. And it's um, um, it doesn't matter. We can put your job together. Mm -hmm. not, I mean, ultimately, it's, you're doing both this jobs. Is, this is the law. Oh, I, so I don't just, I don't no. disagree with that. I'm just making a comment. How do you, when if you had somebody uh, part time at the RV, you got to pay them twenty seven thousand dollars. You must have sold it. If it's so, whatever. Yeah. So that's <coughs> why they wanted um, a lot of businesses are going down to hourly. Yeah. And because it is it is a big it's a gigantic huge increase. And, but it was federally mandated last year. Now, Maine is actually above what is federally mandated. Right now, it's federally mandated at 4.55 a week, and Maine mandates it at, at um, 5.19 a week. Mm -hmm. But they will be jumping up to 9.13 in order to be in compliance with federal regulations once that stay is, um, there's an injunction right now in Texas. And that has put a stay on it because it didn't take into effect small business owners, of which it would really hit. Mm -hmm. But um, that's why last year that they were making it well aware all last year so that businesses and government entities and schools and everyone could make it define the job maybe as hourly mm -hmm. so that it would be in compliance. Well, Stephanie, on, a, on, a, on another note, um, and that's interesting about the federal level. But uh, right now, there's how many states that have passed marijuana laws that are against the federal law? So I see about the state law, but and the federal law has been stayed, and there's a, there's a new sheriff in town up there. I wouldn't worry about the federal law right now. The other part of that is I'm thinking of schools. I don't know of many teachers, and they're all salaried unless they're part time. Yeah. So the school, how is that going to affect the school there, board? There is provisions. Have you brought this to the medical. school board? Pardon me? Have you brought this to the school board? No. I think they didn't have a meeting because they closed. Um, but teachers they, negotiate their contracts every three years, and they agree to what they have put on the, on the before mm -hmm. them. And yes, it is. The state of Maine also said that a starting teacher a few years ago had to start out at 30000 And for four years, they helped to assist people, the towns that didn't have the money to pay that 30000 for a few years. Most teachers are above that. But again, I have a problem with somebody telling a business, this is what you have to pay somebody. It's just, to me, it just doesn't make good business sense if you're just starting out or you'd have to close shop if you don't bring in enough revenue. I'm, I'm, I just don't get it. And I, this came up in something that was totally unrelated to this, and I called and I verified with the Wage Means Office, and I, they be, they are very, very helpful. In fact, all last year they were giving classes to any entity that wanted it, um, especially small governments, 
and they would come in and they would say, here is how you can stay in compliance with the law, and here is what's going to be. Yeah, you just change it to hourly. Sorry? Right? You just change it to an hourly. Yeah, but there is a procedure, salary. and they have guidelines, and they have all the information. It's all free. They will send somebody out to make sure that everything is in compliance, but it it is a gigantic, um, huge uptick in that, and it. Maine does have to comply. Right now, Maine is actually above what the federal government mandated. Mm -hmm. There are many towns, I would say, that will not be able to afford that. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, um, anyway, um, I don't have a problem putting the, the jobs together. We're just going to keep yeah. them. Yeah. So, do you want to just do that so we don't have to uh, sure. think about this Let's again? Look at that. Yeah. So, I have a motion to put town Sarah, administrator and town clerk together. Don't you have to put it on an agenda? And announce that you're going to do that before you make a motion. Oh yeah, we can do it. Then. Sorry, I don't mean to be. Rude. Okay, that's okay. Well, actually, this whole conversation should have been an executive session anyway. It would not have even been on this. So, okay. now, salaries and. But now we know. Yes, she now we know. That up yeah, yeah. She yeah. yeah. can't make a motion without deciding to do this. Okay, well, we'll, we'll put it on, and, and I like to check on it anyway. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. So, um, I any further public adjourn. comment? Make a motion to adjourn. Yes, it is. Second. Second. Second.